Hi folks, thanks for joining us today for the NextGen 8 Upgrade webinar. Uh, we'll give folks a, a chance to log in, give a few minutes uh, to get started. So just stay with us, we appreciate it. All right, why don't we get started? Uh, welcome everyone, thank you for joining our webinar today, Mastering NextGen Enterprise 8, your guide to the latest upgrade. You might be preparing to upgrade to the latest version of NextGen, or maybe you just wanna stay on top of things. This session is designed to help you master NextGen 8 and maximize its potential for your practice. My name is Gary Jacobs, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Before we begin, a few housekeeping items. Um, you'll all be in listen-only mode throughout the presentation, and you're welcome to enter questions for our Q&A session with presenters in the question window that you see on your control panel. Um, we'll be able to address some of your questions live today as time permits, but we will follow up with you after the webinar to address any of your specific questions. Um, noting that today's presentation will be recorded and we'll be sending out a link uh, within a day or so, so you can review the presentation. Um, let's meet our presenters. Dr. Gary Witicha is MedTech Solutions Chief Medical Officer and serves as the clinical voice of our organization. For many years, Dr. Gary had the same role at NextGen, and you'll see he'll be sharing his expertise in the use of the NextGen Enterprise System from his unique clinical perspective. Uh, joining Dr. Gary today is Shauna Wilburn, our Director of Product Development. Shauna is also very well versed in the ins and outs of the NextGen EHR, and she'll be walking you through some of the new features of the NextGen 8 upgrade. Dr. Gary, I think uh, you'll be kicking us off. Yes, thank you, Gary. Hi, everybody. Dr. Gary here. It's good to see you all. You can see me, I guess, but um, we have a filled agenda today. We're going to start off with Shauna going over the NextGen 8 application redesign, showing you some of the things in the poor application. We're going to then jump into some of the ACE content enhancements that are going to be out there um, and available for you. We're going to jump in then to talk about your upgrade roadmap, things you should keep in mind as time permits. We'll answer any questions and let you know about next steps. So let's jump into NG8. Uh, we're going to start with Shauna. Hi, Shauna. How are you doing today? Hey, Dr. Gary. Doing well. Wow, I see a lot of familiar names on the attendee list for today's session. So such a privilege to be back with you all again and be able to share a little bit about NG8 with you today. So looking forward to it. If I haven't had the opportunity to meet you, I'm Shauna Wilburn and I'm the Director of Product Development here at MTS and we'll be walking you through the application changes for today. All right, just a quick technology check. Is my next gen window coming through okay? Is everybody seeing NG8 here on my screen and my mouse moving around? Yes. yes. Okay, perfect. Just wanted to make sure everything was connected. So thank you again for the opportunity and sharing a little bit of your day with us today. I'm excited to show you some of the new features of the EHR application and kind of run through those as a high level. As Dr. Gary said, I'm just going to show you the highlights. There's a lot to get into. There's a lot to, you know, go through with training, setup, configuration. But uh, I'm excited today to show you the highlights and introduce you to NextGen 8. So one of the first things you're probably noticing on my screen is it just looks a little different. NextGen has moved to more of a black and white style, more modern look of the application, moving away from the blue and gray. So you immediately notice the top toolbar, the colors are different, and there's a little bit of just a different look and feel. One major thing you probably notice is the toolbar is not on the right-hand side. The toolbar has been moved to the left-hand side. We work typically from left to right, top to bottom, so NextGen's really syncing that up with just a common workflow approach and kind of moving that over to the left-hand side of the screen so it's just more in alignment with other things we're doing throughout our day. For your providers that you have on staff today, that may be a pretty big impact to their workflow because they're very used to kind of going to the right-hand side of the screen, launching your encounter, and now all of those functionalities will be on the left-hand side of the screen. But one big advantage I think that's gonna bring to your teams is as you onboard new providers and you're doing training, 
I think that'll be a big value for each of your groups to be able to just train that from working left to right because that's more of a common approach. So I'm pretty excited about some of these changes that we're going to go through today and that that being a big one. Another item that you might be noticing just as you're looking at my screen is the toolbar is moved, but also there's no tic-tac-toe buttons down here in the bottom right hand corner. The toolbar and all of the buttons and information have been relocated to the left hand side. So not only do you have, you know, the eight or nine, depending on how your system is set up, tic-tac-toe buttons that you'd have down on the right hand side, those are now all relocated down the left hand side here of your screen. And we have a few new items uh, listed there as well that we'll get into shortly. If I expand my screen just a little bit, it may help illustrate this one a little bit more. Today in your NextGen application, you have buttons across the top here. A lot of people call them uh, peel buttons or something to that effect. You know, there would be things like lab results, problems, data share is a real popular one that was here among others. Again, that information relocated here to the left-hand toolbar. So NextGen's really consolidating things. You know, in your application or your system today, you, those buttons that you have at the top, oftentimes you have the information at the top and you had the information at the bottom and you might even have it on a template that would be listed in your encounter toolbar. So now NextGen's kind of consolidating those workflows. We don't have two or three places with the same information on the screen. It's all kind of funneled into just the one location here on the left-hand side. What I'm gonna try to do, you know, I've been using NextGen a long time and old habits die hard, but I'm gonna try real hard throughout this presentation to use all the new NextGen terminology so that we can begin to learn that and we can begin to start using that terminology as we're communicating and, and getting used and kind of retraining our brain for those of us that have been on NextGen for a little bit to use that new terminology. So when we look at uh, the screen, you've got your word bar and your icon bar across the top here, and that's the top menu and the button bar. That's the terminology that NextGen is using today to describe those two areas of the application. This section here in the middle with all of your patient information used to be the patient information button or the patient information bar or the PIB. Now NextGen is calling this the patient information card, the PIC. So patient information card is the new terminology for this area of the system. This is your quick button ribbon. And we'll get into and go through each of these icons and take a look at those different modules and what we have access to with just one click, which is really exciting and nice. The double arrow here on the left hand side, if I click that double arrow, now I'm seeing my encounter history toolbar that I'm used to seeing on the right hand side of the screen. So nice that it's collapsible. One click, I can get that information back and I can hide it away and store it for a rainy day when I might want my full screen for module or template work. So if I look at this information, this is where my encounter view is. And then I have my categories listed here as well. And little sneak peek, no more demographics. Uh, we had that or you have that button today and we had it in the previous versions and now that button has been removed because everything can be launched from the encounter window. So that's a, a pretty big change to those of us that are used to having those three tabs across the top. Now it's consolidated down into two. CPOE, we still have our CPO E toolbar here and then of course the middle is reserved for module templates, you know, whatever we're launching and working on within the patient's chart. So that's just a little bit of an introduction to the new screen. It's a very big change, but if you take a moment, there's a lot of common items and things that you see here that we have today. And while it is very, very different, it is very comfortable to use because a lot of this feels natural and is what we're used to seeing, it just, albeit it looks a little different in the way that it's displayed today. So if we look at the quick button ribbon, I'm going to run through these icons. Uh, most of them have hover help, not all, but we've got allergies. We have problems. And the nice thing is problems, and I'm going to jump to the bottom, diagnosis are split out. Now, if I click either one of these icons, I go to the module that we're all used to seeing, and nothing has been changed here that I'm aware of. This is very much the same as it is in your application today with your tabs but you do have the opportunity to launch that from one click and the hover help is really nice dividing those areas into two different sections. Medications, immunizations due, appointments, 
vitals. This one takes a second, sorry, I've got a lot of data on that patient. Labs and radiology, lab results. And then I've got a few new buttons here, care guidelines that are due, data share, and then I've got my sticky note down here. If you notice, that's kind of missing per se across the top because we usually have it as a link there and now we've got it as an icon down the left-hand side on the quick button ribbon. Hey, so Shana? just a little bit, oh. yes, sir. Yeah, Shauna, uh, I, I look at the order here. If I don't want that order, can I change that? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I'm glad you asked because that's a neat function of the NG8 application that we have available to us now. Here at the bottom of my quick button ribbon, I have a configuration or a settings button or a, a cog. We used to call it a cog and now it's a wheel, however you want to refer to that. So we'll talk a little bit about file maintenance in a minute, but in file maintenance, you can set your defaults that you want pushed out to all of your users. And then based on those defaults, when each user comes to this wheel or this preferences or settings option, from what was chosen at the practice level, we can then further define that at the patient level. So if in my role, maybe I work in medical records and I may not need to see some of these particular items, or maybe I only work referrals and I only need certain items, I can simplify this list and really tailor it to my individual user workflow and what I need within the practice so that I don't have things there um, that are not necessary or might get in the way of other things. I can simplify my workflow and really tailor it just to those specific things that I need. And since you asked that, I'll go ahead and show this as well. I can also do the same here. So th this wheel or this settings button is the one that I showed you earlier and it controls the quick button ribbon. But if I click this wheel or this settings button, this is getting into my user preferences. So again, one click away, right in my workflow, I can make an adjustment to my preferences, which is super handy as an end user. I don't have to, you know, a lot of times we don't go to preferences all the time. I don't have to necessarily remember where they're at or how to get to those. It's right here in my view, right here in my workflow. And I can just one click away, get in and maybe adjust a setting or make a different choice because maybe I made the first choice when I was brand new to the clinic and now I realize, oh, I wish I'd have made a different selection. And so I can just toggle this and adjust it as much or as little as I would like on the fly. And then just staying in that same vein, when I go to tools preferences, you're going to see the main toolbar is still present in my tools preferences, but now all of those options have been removed. So the tab is still present, but there's no functionality on this tab anymore because all of the main toolbar options and functionality have been relocated right here to a settings menu that can be accessed, you know, right from within the workflow. So super handy and convenient to the end users to really be able to begin to tailor the next gen application to their specific workflow in the clinic and make this system very convenient to use for them and in their day-to-day -day needs. So I'm just going to close my toolbar so that I have that out of the way just to keep my, my screen clean and allow everybody to keep up with where I'm at on uh, where I'm at on the screen. So if I toggle over to file maintenance, I want to show you a couple of new things here as well. If I look at file maintenance, you can immediately see the colors have been changed, very similar to the EHR. We're now looking at a black and white style sheet. The blue and gray has been removed, so a more modern look. And I've got two new tables available under EHR. I have application appearance, which I'm just going to launch it and give you a little bit of a preview. And what this tool or what this table allows us to do in file maintenance is do some practice level configuration. Again, that's what I was mentioning with the wheels and the settings. You can set your practice level configurations that will push down to the users. And then from the options that the practice give the users access to, the users can then pick and choose what they would like to use. So really neat and new functionality that we have available to us. And then the second new table is encounter summary appearance. Encounter summary appearance is where we can set the style sheet that we want to use for different areas of the application. So if any either of those options uh, are appealing to you and you might want to get in there and make some adjustments. Those are two new good tables that you have available to you in file maintenance. 
So that kind of summarizes the look and the feel changes of the application, kind of those things that are going to jump out and affect you day one because your users are not going to be used to the look and the feel. The look and the feel, you know, I don't know if you consider that a major or a minor change. Obviously, a ton of development work has went into it, um, but it definitely is something that you'll want to consider for your training of your end users because day one when they log in, it's going to look different and have a little bit of a different workflow for them. So I think with NG8 more so than maybe upgrade the last few upgrades we've had in the past, end user training and rolling this out to your end users and ensuring they've logged in and at least went through a workflow a few times will be really important to your to your go live on NG8 with your upgrade. Now to talk about some new features, I'm gonna hit each of these new features uh, pretty high level just because I wanna get the presentation and the time passed over to Dr. Gary to dive into some of the, the ACE content. But I do wanna hit a few things with you. If we look at the medication module, We've got a few new things here to be aware of. One is a new DUR alert for inactive medication ingredients. So if that's something that you've been looking for, maybe you've put in a KI or something in NextGen for that or, or put it on the wish list and got some votes on that one. Um, you now have that available to you for DUR alerts for inactive medication ingredients. In the med module, we've got a couple of new features, again, that will show day one for your end users, so definitely want to be aware of these. The MME information listed here, which is the morphine milligrams equivalent information, provide your providers information or alerts if you choose to configure those when the patient exceeds the current CDC risk, risk threshold. So you can set up alerts. And then of course, if you, you've got this little informational button here, if you wanna get more information about that, you certainly can. And this of course is your CDC information listed here. There's quite a few updates that went into the med module around the electronic prior authorizations for medication. Uh, NextGen did some regulatory updates on that, added standard or expedited options, added some automation on the initiation request, updated the responses and authorization details. Uh, but again, good work there and nice improvements if you're using that functionality. But the one thing I wanna highlight to you today is the day supply. That's related to your electronic prior authorization uh, work, and that is added right in the application and will be sent on your initiation requests that go out of the system. So wanted to know, wanted you to know that field and be aware of that change. For immunizations, a couple of rules and logic changes, um, one around Pediorix um, to update that. Uh, NextGen has been working on Pediorix. The last couple of updates, we've received information on that. So continuing our, their work there, as well as some COVID-19 rules updates. At the end of the presentation today, you're going to get a PowerPoint from Dr. Gary and I, and that has some detailed information on those topics there that you can certainly welcome to check out. The PAQ has a variety of options in it, um, good options that you want to check out for your providers. And then I think I'll wrap up with talking about the APSO. Um, the APSO document has been relocated to the right hand side of the screen now. So your template will be on the left and your APSO will be on the right. And APSO has now been expanded to general surgery, GYN, and pediatrics. So all of those specialties plus uh, family practice and psychiatry um, now all has the APSO document and content that you can take advantage of. So thank you again for the opportunity to be with you today. Always treasure our time together and getting to share this new information with you. And that wraps up the EHR new features and content. And I will pass it over to Dr. Gary to talk a little shop with you on the ACE content. We're now going to jump into the ACE updates. These are usability and enhancement updates. I'm going to tell you that this is not everything. It is a high level insight into NGA content. Uh, they only gave me about an hour and I had a lot more than an hour I'd have to cover. So as you're listening to what I have to say, if there's something that you would like to know more about, uh, you, there are release notes. You can also contact us and we can uh, get you that additional information or uh, talk more 
about it. You can also enter questions into the Q&A portion of this application. And if we have time at the end, we can uh, discuss it further. So configurable questionnaires. You may all recall that in the interpreter details, there was the ability to configure various questionnaires to be used for different projects or different things you wanted to ask your patients. Uh, this has now become its own icon. You don't have to tip into interpreter details and then find the one you want. It is now called configurable questionnaires and you can create your own. Uh, so there is a tool that allows you to create the questions that you want to ask for a special intake that you're doing. But it's also good to know that NextGen has taken the COVID screening questions and has built them out in the configurable questionnaires section. Um, and this is also important to know that this blue hyperlink is available elsewhere. You can put it where you want if you have template editor capabilities. Vital sign configurations template. There is a template now that allows you to, it's been expanded. There are percentile alerts for less than the fifth percentile or greater than the 95th. There's also pediatrics alerts that you can set and you can configure weight, length height, weight for length, and head circumference. So the vital signs uh, has become a little more configurable, allowing you to adjust it to your practice's needs. Allergy intolerances. So in the past, all we had as a choice was they were allergic or not, and then we had to pick, you know, what level of sensitivity or allergic reaction they've had. Uh, now it has been added that you have the ability to check a box that says not really an allergy, but it is an intolerance. And so this has allowed you to not only say that they have an intolerance, but it also appears on the, uh, in the template under the allergy section. So you see now that it says that they had a GI problem and it's an intolerance, not necessarily an allergic reaction. Moving forward, uh, one of the questions I have heard for the last 18 years, one from when I was a client and when I worked at NextGen is, why can't we copy forward actual patient details from a previous visit? And that question has been going on and on, and almost every single NextGen client has been saying that since the beginning of time. So the good news is, is that NextGen has taken this capability forward. In the past, you had the ability to copy forward for the assessment and plan. Uh, now in NG8, in the initial NG8, you're gonna see that there is also the ability to copy forward review of systems and PE. Focusing on the review of systems tab, you're going to see that there is a review of systems history button here. This button is grayed out if the patient hasn't had a previous encounter. Once there is review of systems information from a previous encounter available, this button becomes active. When you click on it, you're going to be able to then uh, pick the one you want from the encounter you want and pull it forward. Once you have done so, it is going to pull that previous review of systems into today's encounter. The nice part about this is it also indicates that you pulled this forward from a previous encounter and it tells you the encounter that it was pulled from. Uh, looking at this, these details have not been edited. This is exactly as it was. When you edit this and you have the ability to edit any of these, you're gonna find that added to the end of this is going to be the fact that it has been edited. Notice that the provider name also changed. Of course, this yellow stuff will not be in the uh, system. This was just highlighted so that you could easily see that this stuff was edited by John Williams from an encounter using the data that started from the 10-3 encounter. Not only does it appear in the template itself, but when you print it out into your document, when that document is printed, you're gonna find that it's going to say that it was pulled forward by this provider and it was changed in some way. That's going to allow you to have provenance on your master documents. As we said, it was in also gonna be found in the physical exam history. 
same things apply. This button is not going to be, uh, it's going to be grayed out. When there is stuff from a past encounter present, it becomes active. You click on it and it allows you then to select the physical exam from a previous encounter that you want to pull forward. Looking at that, one of the things they added was the ability to search for a diagnosis. When you click on, you put something in the diagnosis or findings or any of these, you're going to see that it is present and then you can copy and bring it forward into today's encounter. Um, so those we talked about the past or what's currently there. Uh, there is also plans to make the future or in the future version of NG8, Reason for Visit, HPI, that will be copy forward. There will be updates to the diagnosis. Assessment plan will have additional copy forward. And then there are plans to copy forward the prior visit. So if you had a prior visit that you did, you can pull the entire visit or those areas of the visit together and uh, then be able to change and document for today. Another uh, new thing that has been added is a button that says no medications in this encounter. So if there are no medications um, in the patient system, no medications this encounter will be selectable. If there are medications in, this button will not be acceptable or I'm sorry, able to be uh, clicked on or selectable because you have medications that are there. If you are add medications today, this will, if it was checked already, this um, it would then uh, go to null. It would uncheck this because you have added medications. So this is a quick way for those encounters or when there is no medications. Once you've clicked this, if you should then go back and add another or medication into the med module, it would unselect. Some changes to my phrases is that it added a sorting to the column headers. So there's the ability to sort this. There is a free text search. You can type things in to look for the my phrases that you're looking, you know, the ones that contain the phrase or item um, that you're looking for. This is handy if you have just one or two my phrases. Well, it's not such a big deal. But those of you that have been using the my phrase features, uh, you now um, have the ability to sort them to find the ones that apply for the condition or area that you are covering. Once again, there is also a new my phrase type for PAQ, allowing you to document uh, or use the my phrase feature in the PAQ uh, to uh, document uh, anything that is pertinent there. Finalized template, uh, they added a no charge checkbox. So when you're working with your patient, if this becomes a no charge or it is a no charge visit, you can select that and allow uh, the, neck, the biller and others to understand what's going on, that you want this to be a no charge. Uh, with the medical decision-making component, this has been modified. It really allows you, uh, it brings in what you've done so that you can then calculate the provider when they're doing uh, the different things. Uh, this will be auto-populated, but then they can uh, check things. It, it, it's sort of like what we had before we went to the uh, E&M coding 2021 um, and subsequent versions of that. This takes us back to what NextGen used to do very, very well to show us uh, you know, what we've done with this patient so that we can then come up with the appropriate complexity or medical decision making. So this is a great new feature found on the finalized template. A lot of you may have clinical pharmacists that are collaborating with your provider team. Uh, NextGen has added a visit type to uh, capture the clinical pharmacist's uh, work with your patients. Um, it also allows you to um, finalize, calculate the appropriate code from that clinical pharmacist visit. The other thing that's important is that there is a new pop-up template that allows the clinical pharmacist to enter their 
recommendations. That also includes my phrase functionality, and that will flow into your encounter document. So it captures and pulls that clinical pharmacist collaboration into today's encounter. For those of you that do procedures, this is a um, great addition. Uh, one of the things I've heard over the years is that, well, I can only do one procedure on here. So the enhanced generic procedure workflow has been expanded. One thing, if you're gonna see that there is the my phrase capabilities. So you can document more quickly the various procedure notes, findings, and things that are repetitious. You've done it before and you do it the same way, um, allow you to pull it in quicker. The other nice part is that for each of the procedures, you can complete and then add it to the grid, the grid on the bottom. Once you have it all done, you then can super, uh, submit everything to the super bill. This will speed up not only the ability to do a procedure documentation, but allow you to do multiple procedures during the same encounter. It's really gonna help those procedural based uh, scenarios uh, allow you to document more quickly. Lots of changes to the, uh, well, some changes to the care plan template. There are uh, requirements that needed to be met. And what you're gonna see here is uh, the care plan offers some more functionality. It's going to allow you to get into the history of all or generate the care plan history so that you can look how this patient has progressed. It also allows you to document any interventions and then progress that has been made on your care plan. Uh, so this, subs this really helps that care plan workflow for your nursing or care, care nurses. Custom screening tool builder. The custom screening tool's been around for a while. One of the big things that was asked for was the ability to calculate or score a percentage before we only had text or numeric uh, scoring. Now there is the ability to do percentage. You have the ability to rearrange the questions. If you've ever tried to build a screening tool and you missed a question, the frustration was you had to sort of delete and start over, or clear and start over. Now you have the ability to add questions. If you need to add a question in the future, you can add it in and then these little buttons here allow you to advance it up or down. Um, and then the other thing that's great is that you can now do this by specialty. So you can have different screening tools by specialty so that when you're looking at that list, there are less things to go through to find the screen you're looking for. Template configuration in the uh, practice configurations, the framework template set, you're gonna find that there is now the ability to create a simplified view. What you're gonna do is come in here and click on this simplified view setting. When you open that up, you're gonna see these are all the items that you can now hide from your view of the templates. What's nice here is that if you weren't sure what it is, you could also click on this little info button here and it will tell you what's there. Um, once you've selected the one you want to hide, you click OK and it is now decluttering your screen. Before or previously, you're gonna see that the care guidelines were present. You had this information. You also have this risk, contagion risk and stuff up top. If your organization doesn't want to see this and you do not want this taking up the space, you can click the buttons on that simplified view uh, uh, configuration template. And then afterwards, notice that all this space has been cleared up. So what this has done is it has removed some of the visual clutter and it has allowed you to remove things that you don't need to see or have another way of accessing. It really makes your view um, a lot simpler and a lot easier to look at. Uh, just here under framework, you have the ability to have configurable visit types. So you're not just limited on the visit types that come out of the box that have been in NextGen. If you've got something very specific that you wanna add, a custom visit type, you have the ability to configure 
uh, that visit type and pull in all of the things. So this is a great feature, especially if you do things that are not typical or uh, atypical, uh, you now have the flexibility to make the visit type your own. There have been a number of care guideline improvements over the years, uh, and I'm not gonna get into a lot of detail here. If you need help with care guidelines, reach out. We, have the, we can help you set up your care guidelines. Uh, but some of the things that have changed with care guidelines, uh, under health maintenance, uh, things have been added and updated, lung cancer, colon screening, uh, diabetes, unhealthy drug use screening, there have been changes under the health maintenance items. Uh, also important to know that under care guidelines, your immunizations are no longer managed in care guidelines. If they are there and you want to remove, there is the ability to do a mass removal, clear and restore template capabilities to allow you to clean up things that you are looking to get rid of. Um, Care guideline improvement, as you know, when you're running care guidelines, it has been a resource hog on your system. There is now a performance improvements little uh, button here or checkbox. This really has been put in to help you uh, get better uh, capabilities or, or I should say better performance with your system. When you click this little button, you're gonna see here something called economy mode. And what this does is that once you click that, it's going to only run the, the stored procedures behind the care guidelines the first time that the care guidelines are launched during the encounter. So this is great to reduce the resource hogging that sometimes occurs with your care guidelines. Another thing that's here is that refresh icon as you're going through your encounter you're going to be able to see, you know, that the a number of care guidelines that things are being refreshed as you are taking care of things during that encounter. Uh, this allows you to have a better uh, visual uh, visualization of where you are with the care guidelines that need to be handled. Um, another thing is a new search feature. This search feature allows you to uh, look at your various care guidelines to reduce that visual clutter to be the things that you need to get to at this time. So this here allows you to shorten the list of care guidelines that you're gonna be able to see or it surfaces those that you want to get to at this point. Uh, another thing that's important in the care guidelines is the ability to do that two-tier care, uh, care guidelines. You can set this up so that if you have a, an example of a hemoglobin A1C, if you get a result that needs to be followed up with another test, you can set that up so that when the results from the initial test come back, it automatically triggers the second text or the second test uh, for that care guideline. So this is a really great feature, uh, allows you to make sure that you're getting all the components for um, your care uh, for your patient. So both tiers are displayed, um, but once again, it allows you to set it up so that you do the initial screen or test. When that result is done, depending on what needs to be done, it triggers the next level of the next tier of testing. Uh, I'm gonna skip over this, but there is claims-based reporting for HEDIS. This has been added. This allows you to do some of those claims-based reporting measures uh, for HEDIS. Uh, we're gonna get into some specialty stuff at this point. Uh, there are some updates. I am not going over everything. I'm giving you a very high level view of the uh, specialty updates. It is important that when you're looking at NG8 that you review what's gonna be uh, needed for your organization. As you all know that I'm a women's health expert and that's my background. There are a number of women's health enhancements in the system. Uh, the majority of them are going to be in the OB uh, component of women's health. Uh, so there are a number of items. Uh, this list, you will, by the way, get this template or this PowerPoint so you can look at the stuff in more detail. But 
I'm just going to go through these very quickly. There have been changes made to the OB problem template. Your providers are going to be happy because it now uh, allows them to work the OB problems with the other things they're doing for the OB problems. If you look at this and you've looked at the chronic conditions template that is in NextGen, this has been modified to allow you to then add new problems and then work the problems that have been there for this patient. It's got a lot of great features. It allows you to work on the OB problems and also view the orders um, and results for the various diagnostic labs, office services, and also uh, review your OB uh, within this OB problems. You can literally look at everything from one view. You're not jumping over, trying to remember, adding to the OB problem list. Here, it allows you to do one shop uh, handle uh, the not only the problems, but the labs and diagnostics that have been done or are going to be done. There is a big change to OB test lab orders, and this is a new grouping of panels. As you're going to see, there it used to be a simple pa a single panel with everything on it, and it was one big area. Now it has been split out. So there are a uh, go back a second. There there's the initial orders and then the individual weeks, the genetic screening has been pulled out, the chromosomal testing, ultrasound, optional orders that can be added, and diagnostic studies. The other thing that's important is that each of these panels is configurable. Uh, and so you have the ability to put the tests that are needed for your area and for your organization. So it takes the guidelines that you need for the different uh, trimesters and time periods. It allows you to then uh, segment your testing accordingly. Uh, you also have a lab results historical capability. So if you have historical labs, the patient brings them in or they were done in a time period, you have the ability to enter a historical uh, entry uh, and the date that was done and complete all this. This is a quick entry. Um, it also, if you needed to get into the orders module, you'd be able to click a link. It's, it's sort of hidden here, but there is a link here to allow you to get into the orders module if you're looking for a specific test that's been done. Uh, so this is an enhancement that really is gonna help speed up that management of the orders. There is the uh, OB test name configuration. It allows you to go in and uh, configure the test names to be what you're looking to uh, see. Sometimes the tests are a little convoluted in their names. This makes it a little easier for you to manage. There's also a new diagnostics template. It allows you to enter diagnostic details that you received, but as you can see here, this, uh, the OB diagnostics panel is where you would go to add and order and manage all of your OB diagnostics. Looking further, there is the family planning uh, annual report 2.0 and Title X works that's been done. Uh, this has been updated. What's important to know there is that if you are reporting FPAR 2.0, or the Title 10, uh, you're going to want to check out the new features and the new requirements within uh, those templates. Uh, this is just showing uh, there are new crystal reports for you to be able to look at your encounters and data. The other thing that's pretty uh, cool now is that your templates have been updated. That testing and results panel allows you to get to all the various tests that you need to look at. And if you needed to get into the orders module, you'd be able to jump into the orders management right from here so that you can update or uh, manage the orders. The general template has also been reconfigured or redone. As, and uh, there's also the insurance uh, added so that you can see the patient's insurance type. 
Moving forward to pediatrics, uh, there have been changes to the pregnancy birth history. And so one thing that's been there is that there is the ability for uh, birth history infection. Uh, the hep C has been added into that. The patient or the baby's discharge weight, so that can be taken um, into view by the pediatrics team. But now all of this information has been updated so that it is more efficient or effective for uh, those taking care of the baby um, moving forward. ACEs and PEARLS, this is that adverse childhood experiences or pediatric ACEs and related life event screener. There is a new option in here to allow you to document uh, both ACEs and PEARLS uh, templates and the findings. Jumping into community health, uh, there is on the prepare, there have been updates here there is uh, data now ability to pull forward or enter into household side in income and the document when it's generated will also include uh, this information so family home and resources this has been enhanced and it allows that data to flow into prepare and it will now appear on your document for those of you that are working with transgender or uh, just need to get to gender neutral uh, information, the STI template has been uh, updated to provide a gender neutral format that allows uh, for you to capture uh, parts, both male and female anatomy and how that's involved in STI. There's also been work done on HIV, PEP, and PrEP. There's an HPI template now available for those of you that are treating patients or offering PEP and PrEP to your at-risk uh, populations. You have all that you need to be able to uh, meet the guidelines and recommendations for the prescribing of PEP and PrEP. Um, and you, this is an HPI and it allows you to get to um, all the various components, including the uh, to do a full physical exam and other capabilities or things that are needed there. So check this out if you are working with the HIV uh, at risk populations. Cardiology, uh, cardiology device template is uh, Really, the biggest thing there, there are some other things, but the biggest thing now is the device uh, allows you to look at uh, additional information regarding your devices. And uh, so if you have cardiology, you're going to want to check out all features that apply to cardiology. If you're doing an ASC, uh, what's really important here is that the ASC procedures template is going to allow for the DUR check. So built into various parts of the ASC procedures, you have the ability to uh, get a DUR check before you administer medications during the procedure. So that's very high level for the specialties. There's a lot more that uh, you really need to review. Uh, know your specialties and then uh, looking at release notes uh, to make sure that uh, you know all the enhancements to help you choose if you want to go on NGA now or if you want to wait for the next release. Uh, there's a lot of good documentation on what's included. What do I do next? If you need to know the specifics of the upgrade, there are two links. So when you get this PDF, you're going to be able to click on these links and it will take you to uh, this day one impact. Also, new feature summary for NG8. Uh, you're going to need to figure out or determine if you actually need an upgrade or not at this point. So um, there is no regulatory requirement to upgrade to NG8. Uh, there is uh, some regulatory requirements coming down, uh, but they, NextGen is putting uh, some of that stuff into 6.2021. But you really want to make sure that you take NG8 when you are ready for it. Uh, the sooner the better because NextGen is going to be adding new features to NG8. You're going to want to make sure that you're taking things and staying um, upgradable. 
uh, but you're going to have to determine when you're ready to do this. Um, and so uh, if you need help with that, uh, please reach out to us. We can help you make that decision. Uh, it's also important that you don't forget your specialties when you're doing an upgrade like this. Um, and, uh, you know, one thing to remember is that optical management, if you are on optic or the optical management, it is a part of the core release. So you no longer have to do the separate upgrades uh, for the optic or the ophthalmic. But for ortho, you're not going to want to jump onto NG8 if you have the ortho suite because uh, there is going to be, you know, there, you want to make sure that you're ready to move for that. So the ortho suite, you, it's recommended that you don't jump onto NG8 right away and you wait a little bit longer. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you look at the specialties that you have, where you are today, and then figure out if you want to upgrade or not. There are a lot of different things for you to think about when you are upgrading to NG8. Um, if you're on NextPen, the dashboard, mobile, PIX, PXP portal, uh, if you're making these decisions or as you are, we have uh, information that you can click on and it will take you to the things you need to know about each of these areas or functionalities. Also, there are tested software versions. Um, you're, you'll have this presentation. It will tell you these are the tested versions for NG8. Um, once again, if you need help, um, you know, NTS can help you. We are experienced at doing updates, upgrades, or even uh, gap analysis to help you prepare and move forward uh, to the adoption of NG8. One question I need to just put out there is if you haven't done a system deep dive configuration and a, a review of your workflows, you may want to do that before and then see what it's going to look like when you move to NG8. And um, I have many team members that can help you with a system deep dive configuration check as well as workflow analysis to get you from current state to your world on NG8. So that was a little, uh, we had some technical issues there and I apologize. Uh, we will be making sure you see all that information or get all that information um, that was uh, on within the system. Uh, Shauna does a great work through on that. Um, but are there any questions, Gary, at this point? Yes, uh, thanks, Dr. Gary. And just to echo that, um, we apologize for the technical difficulties early on the call. Um, as you suggested, uh, the recording that we sent out will include Shauna's notes on the uh, NG8 app redesign. So uh, you'll have some additional detail. Um, once you receive that information from us. So, um, Dr. Gary, on, on the finalized template slide, you called to our attention a no charge checkbox. And Jason's question is, can the no charge checkbox in, on the finalized template be used for one line item or individual line items instead of the whole visit? It, from what I have seen, and uh, I will get clarification that is for the entire encounter because as you see where it is it's right there in the finalize of the encounter and so it is applying to everything there um but that would be a great feature enhancement uh that we should submit to next gen because sometimes you just want one element of the encounter not to be charged and Thank if you. there's a specific thing uh that you're uh let me know so because there may be ways during your workflow where you can um, collect the data but not submit it to Superbill. So uh, if, if there was something in particular, uh, let's let's see. Okay. Um, next question. I believe you touched on this, but the question is: Is it required to take the NG8 upgrade? It is not required, um, but it is strongly encouraged. The biggest thing is there is uh, if you're doing a full year of uh you know submission of data to the the, the government uh you're going to want to have the updates there are updates for 6.2021 but
But NG8 itself, uh, you don't have to do it right away, but it's strongly encouraged because next gen isn't doing big releases. There's not going to, you're going to see that NG8 is going to have additional features added to the core. So the most important thing is to figure out when the what NG8 offers you fits the needs of your organization, keeping in mind all those things like your patient portal and other capabilities, your current workflows, and then what specialties you have. Uh, the, the ortho suite was one where they recommend not to take NG8, uh, but take, to take a future version of it, uh, whereas others you would be able to take it now. There are a lot of great features. The look and feel alone is a reason to take it, uh, but you really have to evaluate your organization, where you are, and uh, make that decision on what you want to do. And if you need help with that, reach out to us. We have people that can walk you through that and help you look at your current situation and do a gap analysis to figure out the best plan forward. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, last question we have is, what if we're a specialty that typically has a separate upgrade? The example given is ophthalmology. Does this apply to us? So it, once again, uh, if you ophthalmology or the opt cool management system was the one that was pulled off to the side so with that you're going to want to uh, it's already included when you take ng8 you've got it there you're going to want regardless of the specialty you're going to want to see how what you have in your system today is affected that's where you know you should all be on 6.2021 um, it's a fairly easy easy lift to get to ng8 but you're gonna to wanna to evaluate if it's the best time now. Ophthalmology should not be a problem. Thanks, Dr. Gary. Um, so we're uh, closing in at the top of the hour. Um, let's advance to that next uh, last slide there. Uh, briefly, before we let you go, for those of you who may or may not be familiar with MedTech Solutions, you'll see we're listing our offerings here for more information on any of these products or services feel free to reach out to us or, or check out our website, medtechsolutions.com. Um, if you'd like any additional detail about what you heard today from uh, Dr. Gary, feel free to reach out to us. If you know your account manager, you can contact them directly or email us at info at medtechsolutions.com. Um, just to remind, we'll be following up within a day or two with a link to the recording of today's webinar. Um, MTS is active on social media. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms. You'll find us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, X. Um, we also have a YouTube page with a bunch of educational videos, and we encourage you to take a look at the MedTech Solutions channel there. Um, big thanks again to uh, both Dr. Gary and Shauna for a uh, presentation today. Um, that concludes our webinar. Thanks again for joining us and have a great rest of your day, everyone. Have a great day, everybody. Take care.